Well, I did part one of a daycare Q&A and now I am back for part two. Sarah here from Work Life Glue. I am back for part two of my daycare Q&A. If you didn't see that first one, make sure you go back and watch it. I ask for questions on YouTube as well as Facebook and there were tons and tons and so I'm just trying to knock them out as quickly as possible to give you guys the answers. But I also had like a little mini announcement in that last one somewhere in the middle so you'll have to go look for that if you are interested. It's about meal planning and daycare recipes so make sure you go watch that one if you didn't catch that but I'm just gonna keep trucking and jump right in how do you keep track of your payments do you provide invoices to the parents at the end of the year for taxes if so how do you do it so yes I have some parents who ask for different invoices and receipts for um, reimbursement purposes with their job so I just like do that in a word document but I keep track of it all on kidcare.com I just find that I do all my billing on there right now I plan to switch because it's had a lot of glitches and has been driving me crazy but when I switch to something new I probably will still put all their invoices in there because it's really easy come tax time to just a couple clicks and it prints out what they've paid for the whole year so I can always get that information to them if they're interested um, so yeah, I do everything currently on kidcare.com. What's your ratio on how much money you invest back into your program? Do you upgrade items as you go? Is there a certain time in the year? What are some small essentials that you find yourself replacing often? So at this point on my daycare, I don't really upgrade a lot. I do buy new things, but I haven't had to really replace things a whole lot. So I don't really update things and set aside a certain percentage. I just think of things throughout the year. Usually the summertime I end up buying more things and maybe around Christmas time or Black Friday when there's sales but I will buy things um, and plan in advance. Like I got sand tables, I got a new swing for the kids, um, buckets for outside and then like I'll go to the Dollar Tree and buy stuff there. I don't really budget it out. I just use our household money for that because it's not very much. But in general, I'm pretty much set with what I want for the daycare. I don't, I'm trying to do more of a minimalist thing. Um, but if there is like a bigger thing I want, I just think about it in advance and add it to our budget. I don't really have like a ratio. That is what's kind of hard with daycare because it is out of your house and I just do sole proprietorship so it's not like a separate entity. But um, I do try to preserve as much of my income as possible because you know if I spent it all back on daycare then there's nothing left for my family. Um, but yeah. My daycare has been open for almost a year and I only have one full time and one part time. What are the best ways to get your name out there if you're new to the neighborhood? Um, I was totally new to our neighborhood when I opened. Um, so I think I have a whole video on advertising and also being seen as a professional. I'll link that one below as well because I think those tips can really help. Okay, moving on now to Facebook questions. How do you handle separation anxiety in older kids? Um, I have dealt with this. I usually, you know, I, let's define older kids. I would say, you know, three, four, five-year-olds. Younger is, you know, infants one, two. Uh, the littler ones, like, I'll let them sit with me more. Um, you know, f every kid's so different, so it really depends. But I, I have dealt with, you know, older kids who have started and had separation anxiety. I would, you know, hug on them, love on them a little bit, and then just give them their space. Um, I had, you know, a couple kids who, when they first started, would cry a lot and just need some time, but I think they would see, like, they're not getting a reaction from that, and we're off having a good time once I gave them some attention, and then just said, okay, when you're ready to join us, you can come, you know, come back. Um, I have had, like, kids bring a picture of their family or have a special blanket in their nap and they could go like touch if they need it but in general um, we're usually so distracted during the day with all the stuff that we do that it's not a big issue but I don't know I would I usually just try to figure out what works for that particular child work with the parents on it um, and try to figure out if it's really separation anxiety or if it's trying to get attention because sometimes they kind of go hand in hand what do you do when a kid refuses to eat what you provide for lunch or snack? I talked a little bit about 
picky eaters in the last Q&A, um, but if a kid refuses, then they don't eat. That's what I do. <laughs> they just don't, they don't eat anything then. That's their choice. My job is to prepare healthy meals for them and offer it, and their job is to eat it. And if they don't want to do their job, that's fine, but they're gonna be hungry. I don't do like where I carry the meal over to snack. I just, I don't wanna have food floating around everywhere and just the power struggle that that would involve. But um, like there's kids who say, who have cried at snack because they didn't want that. And I said, sorry bud, we'll just have to see what's for snack tomorrow. And you'll hopefully you'll get some food when you get home. And you know, it's tough, but that's how they learn. I'm not a short order cook, especially with 10 kids. Um, it's just not possible. It's not happening. And that's life. How do you handle rude comments made by people at pickup? So some examples. Must be nice to sit around all day. Your candle stinks. You need to turn it off. You look tired. A little makeup goes a long way. Oh boy. Um, I've never dealt with comments like that. I would have a very hard time. I am not a confrontational person at all. Um, but that would, that would maybe be, I wouldn't say an immediate termination, but I would probably write a letter saying, you know, I will not tolerate rude belittling comments in my home, in my business, in front of my children and the daycare children. And if it happens again, it will be an immediate termination. I just think I'm not putting up with that. <laughs> just that really makes me angry. Uh, if somebody said I sat around all day though, I don't know what I would say because I work dang hard. Um, and if it was a parent saying that, I would maybe term because if that's what they think I do with their kid all day, then they're not really invested in my childcare, they're not valuing it, and they're obviously not involved in knowing what goes on. Um, I would have a really hard time. I think I would give a warning and then if it happened again, I just can't imagine being told that. I can't. Uh, what is your sickness policy and do you strictly enforce it? I feel like there's always that one who constantly has a runny nose or small cough that doesn't quite fit being sick enough to send home but keeps getting everyone else sick. That's tough. Um, I'm lucky that I don't get a lot of illnesses, but I do. I have had a few doozies like hand, foot, and mouth and norovirus and pink eye that really hit us hard. But it's mostly been my family that's been hit hard, not daycare kids so much. Um, I, I'm really upfront at the beginning in the interview that, you know, if you dope and drop, you know, dope with Tylenol and then drop them off, um, that is grounds for immediate termination. And uh, my parents are really good about letting me know if their kids are sick, keeping them home if they are. But if I had one who was sick a lot, I don't know. I think that's that's really tough. I would maybe just talk to them and say, like, have you guys looked at cleaning your ducts? Or, like, are you guys going out a lot? I, I think I would ask the parents, like, do you have you taken them in? They've been sick a lot. And I think that's more of the root of the problem than um, them getting everybody else sick. I would try to figure out why their kid's getting sick so much when nobody else is. Because I have heard of, like parents finding out they had mold in their home or when their kids are sick they don't keep them home and they like instead of staying home all day with their kid they like go out to target and this and that and their kids aren't getting adequate rest and they are infecting everybody else in the process so I mean you can't totally stop any of that but it's worth having a conversation with the parents just to see that's tough I would maybe just really try to figure out what I could do or maybe do a little thing in my newsletter like I see that people are getting a lot of colds here are some suggestions of elderberry syrup and essential oils to be taking at home and probiotics and stuff to help minimize sickness and kind of passively aggressively <laughs> do that and just help the other kids build immunity um, because you can't tell a parent what to do and I you can't make them stay home for a cold. I mean, you could, you could have that in your rules that said if they have a cold, they can't come, but that's gonna be really tough to 
in force. So I don't know, hopefully that gave some suggestions. What supplies do you stock up on during back to school shopping time? Notebooks, folders, glue, but I already bought a humongous thing of glue because we use glue for a lot of crafts and I like to make slime. Um, I just bought more markers and crayons and stuff like that. Basically just like the basic craft supplies. Um, but other than that, I don't really stock up on a lot because I already have a pretty big surplus. What do you guys stock up on at school time? Maybe there's something I should be stocking up on that I'm not. How to prevent burnout and how do you find a reliable substitute? So I have a whole video on daycare provider self-care. I will link to that below to answer the burnout portion and just having a strong why. And I would highly encourage you to have something else outside of daycare that sets your heart on fire. For me, it's this YouTube channel. Um, it's just something I'm so passionate about. And even if I have a hard day with daycare, it gives me something else to look forward to as well as family time, you know, and stuff like that. But that's a big one. But for finding a reliable substitute, like most of this stuff, it is dependent on your area. But in our area, we have childcare providers who have retired from their in-home daycare and now are substitutes. So they will come to your house. They're still licensed and everything, but they will come to your house and watch your kids and you pay them. I also have used my husband here and there and my mom who are licensed to watch up to 30 hours a year. But other than that, I try to schedule things when I'm closed. I try to close at least once a month for stuff like that and just self-care and time with my girls. But yeah, I think just seeing if there is anybody in your area, otherwise closing early or doing what you have to do. Is running an in-home daycare a steady source of income? Have you ever had someone flake out on an overdue balance? And if so, what are the steps you would take after that? Um, is it a steady source of income? No, um, at least not for me. It comes and goes. I have like, for example, this fall, I have four kids leaving, which is a huge hit. Um, but I, I've already filled two of the spots, but I'm having trouble filling two. So you can't rely on having all of your spots filled at any given time. Um, so just being okay with that and being prepared for that. Um, as far as someone flaking out, I do require the last two weeks up front so that if they do flake out, I have those last two weeks. I don't allow parents to drop their kids off if they haven't paid for the week. They always pay up front. So they pay for the week that hasn't quite happened yet because of that very reason. And because it's a service I'm offering, it's not like babysitting. It's an actual like commitment, it's tuition. Um, usually you pay college tuition, you know, up front. And you don't pay for it like at the end of the year after it's happened. So that's how I look at it and try to avoid that situation. But I would definitely take a family to small claims court if they signed my contract and they were like in breach of that and they owed me a decent amount of money. I would like to know your experience with daycare siblings and its challenges. Um, siblings are always a challenge and honestly, I feel like all my daycare kids right now are siblings because they argue constantly like siblings. But I mean, siblings come with their own baggage per se. I mean, they're little kids, so. but they ha I mean, they fight more. They also love on each other more. They may wrestle more because they're allowed to do that at home. Um, and they push each other's buttons. But other than that, I haven't had like a major problem with it. I do have, you know, siblings who they're like amazing together. And I have my own two daughters in daycare. And, you know, I don't know. I think that's a hard thing to really answer. It depends on the kids, but yeah, they may fight more. Um, but, or they may like, if one goes to preschool and one stays, the littler one might, you know, have separation anxiety from their sibling, but you just, every situation so unique, that's a hard one to answer. But yeah, I mean, anytime kids are siblings, they come with their own annoyances, but they also come with their own beautiful things to them and how they can cheer each other up and things like that. Would you take a child with a disability? Uh, yes and no. Uh, 
Tom Copeland is a really good resource about stuff like this, about like the legality of saying no to somebody for something like that. And from my understanding, it is not illegal to um, not accept a child with a disability if, if you can't reasonably make accommodations. So if I had a kid show up at an interview in a wheelchair, I could not accept that child. I have no ramps, I have stairs all over my home, it's a four level house. Um, and I just couldn't reasonably make accommodations for that. Same with like a peanut allergy. I don't think I would accept a child with like a major peanut allergy where they couldn't have anything at all, like even made in a factory with peanuts because the stress that it would bring me and just having to shop so differently and making sure the kids don't come in with like having eaten a muffin with peanuts in it, uh, I just couldn't, I couldn't make the accommodations for that. But um, I have had children with some like developmental disabilities. I've had um, very premature children who are behind and just children with general um, learning disabilities and things like that. So definitely in that area, yes. So I just try to ask myself like, will caring for this child take away from the quality of care of everybody else? If yes, um, how much and is that something I'm okay with because all these other parents are relying on me to give a certain level of care and I also need to be able to fill up my cup and is this child have so many emotional issues or something like that or behavioral issues that I would like be losing my mind at the end of the day and if so, like is that worth it to me? So it's a struggle because like obviously you want to provide for all kinds of kids and things but when you have a group you want to do the best job you can for the group. So that's how I'll answer that question. I'd love to see how you set up your safety plans, what they look like and formatting. Um, we just have specific ones in our county and our state that we use so I don't really have like a specific form that I could share beyond what our what is already just required of everybody where I live. In your video about cleaning, you said you and your baby had hand, foot, and mouth and that you closed without pay. What made you determine that you weren't going to get paid? So the way I have my contract laid out, if a child is sick and they stay home, I still get paid. If my family is sick and I close, I don't get paid. It sucks, um, but I have thought about it over and over and over again and I just, in my own heart, I can't feel good charging families when I am not open. Um, so yeah, I didn't get paid for a whole week. It was awful. It sucked. It's a whole week of pay I didn't get and it was unexpected, um, but it comes with the territory. I, I just couldn't feel right saying you have to go somewhere else for a week, but you still owe me. I do close, you know, I have planned closings throughout the year of paid closings, a week off here, days off here, and I feel okay with that because I've earned it. It's in my contract. They know about it up front, but when it comes to closing for illness, when it's unexpected, I, I just can't say like, go pay somebody else and pay me because the whole point of me being closed during you know, plan closings is that I would hope they would utilize family or take their own vacation during that time so they're not having to pay two people. But if I have to close unexpectedly for illness, chances are they're probably going to have to pay somebody else. And I just, I don't feel right that my family's sick, but they're having to pay double. Um, it really doesn't feel right that I get no pay, but th there's just no like good balance to that besides to save money for those situations. Some people do like three paid sick days a year and I may eventually like add that instead of raising my rates, I'll add in some sick days. But at this point, if I'm closed and sick, I don't get paid. How difficult was it to get state licensed? In Minnesota, it, I mean, it's one of the more difficult states. I would say we have a lot, a lot, a lot of rules. We had to put up a fence in our particular situation just due to some things around our yard um you know smoke detectors trainings fire extinguishers fire marshals all that kind of stuff i mean it was difficult but 
my home is safe so i don't know i guess it was worth it. it i think there are a lot of weird rules that make no sense but i'm not gonna get into that i would say it was reasonably difficult it's a lot at once but it wasn't unbearable if that makes sense okay last question what do you do about rates for families with more than one child i personally do not discount for multiple children because to me they're not any easier in fact like i talked about siblings they have their own <laughs> drawbacks in some ways so um, i don't discount for that and i also speaking of rates like i just charge one rate I don't go up and I don't go down. So whatever they start at is what they're locked in at. So those are all the answers to the daycare questions. I had a lot of fun answering them. Stay tuned pretty soon for some new fun daycare related extras, I guess you could say. And I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.